One, two, a one, two, three, four. This is the story of a boy named Benjamin Sniddlegrass. Benjamin wasn't normal. He knew this fact very well and was often reminded of it by his guardian, Aunt David Morrissey. You're not normal, Benjamin Sniddlegrass. Benjamin had been living with David Morrissey since the death of his parents. She was not a pleasant woman to live with. Clean up your room, you pathetic excuse for a human being. Tuck your shirt in, you grotesque postule of snot. Faggot. At first, she made him sleep in the ironing cupboard. When he outgrew that, she moved him into the bathroom. But Ben found solace in his one true passion, skiffle music. Most of all, he loved Johnny Leroy. Leroy was a rebel, a rockabilly god who rode his own path through life. He didn't answer to no one. Women adored him, but best of all, he was ginger. Don't think I haven't wondered what you'd be like if you could take me under. This shared shade of red gave Ben hope as he trudged through his dreary existence. Oh, freak! <laughs> but little did he know that it was all about to change. I'm home, Aunt David. Speak when you've spoken to, you stinking freeloader. What are you doing with my mail? Well, it's addressed to me. What was that? Nothing. As if anyone would be sending you any mail. Give that here, boy. It's mine. What are you babbling about? Give it to me. Say please. What? You never ask me to do anything. You always tell me. Eat your dinner, freak, even if it's two months stale. Clean up the dog's mess even though I've got no gloves or tissues. You take all the money I make on my paper round and never let me spend any. I sleep in the bathroom. Well, this is mine and I'm going to do whatever I like with it. Finally, started to think you weren't coming. 
Hi, I'm Pentangle. Come on, no time to waste. School's expecting us in four hours. The what? Welcome to Fairport Island, home to your new seat of learning, Fairport Academy. It was discovered in 1858 by Jeremiah. Fairport. How'd you know? Lucky guess. Oh, okay. That's... How do they do that? With magic, of course. How have you been listening to a word I've said? Got another five students to collect and bring in today. I'll be back in a few days though. Well, who am I going to talk to? Who's going to show me what to do around here? I don't know what's going on. You tell me I'm some kind of wizard and then drop me in magic school on some island in Australia and expect me to fend for myself. Calm down, Ben. Do what everyone else does when they start a new school. Make a friend. Howdy, stranger. You must be new around these parts. Just who might you be? Benjamin. Benjamin Snittlegrass. Of course you are. So you're the one everyone's talking about. They are? Everyone's dying to find out how Percy and Lucy Snittlegrass's son turned out. Are you following me? No. I think this is my flaw too. What are those? I'm nearsighted. Well, we can fix that. How did you do? Magic. By the way, I'm Scarlet Sarah Christie McKenna. Be seeing you. Benjamin Snittlegrass, you are following me. <laughs> it's a bit overwhelming around here. Trust me, you get used to it. How long have you been here? I'm in third year, majoring in potions, minoring in banjo. Here we go, the new headmaster's about to speak. Hello, my name is Werner Herzog. 
I will be your headmaster for the new year. I'm here at the Fairport Academy on an exchange program from the Werner Herzog Rogue Film School of Germany. The Fairport Academy is about a way of life, a climate. It's, it's the excitement that makes magic possible. While I'm here, strict censorship will be enforced. So there will be no talk of, of shamans, yoga classes, nutritional values, herbal teas, no discovering one's boundaries or inner growth. I am not here to befriend. I'm here to educate, to educate students. I look into the eyes of students and I lose myself in a, in a flat, frightening stupidity. I do kind of love students, but I find you more frightening than any other animal. By the time I get through with you, you will be the greatest generation of Vitas and Vitettes the world has ever seen. But don't expect to find happiness. I've never cared much for happiness. I find it a, a strange notion. I, I'm just not made for it. I, I, it's never been a goal of mine. I, I, uh, I, I don't think in those terms. Let the school year begin. In cold blood. I've got the ghost of Truman Capote for English Lit. <sighs> Lucky boy. I got the ghost of Ayn Rand two years in a row. Looney cow. Hello again. Settling in a bit, are we? Yeah, I think so. It's almost like... You belong here? Yeah. Told you. So, do you have any love interests mm. yet? <laughs> Girlfriend? <laughs> Boyfriend? Hey, no. <laughs> I haven't really found a... It's not like women would be interested in me. Well, you know, you're pretty good looking. For a ginger. Uh, <laughs> stop it. You're too kind. Come on. We need to get you a new wardrobe. Oh, do we have to do a montage for this too? And up! Ah, young Steedlegrass, what can I be doing for you on this fine day? I was wondering, sir, if, if you could tell me about my parents. Your parents? Sit. It's just that, well, everybody seemed to know who they were. Everybody but me. They died when I was a baby. Mr. Pentangle said you knew them back in the day? 
yes, your, your father and I were, were great comrades. He was a joy to me. In fact, he was one of the few people I actually learned something from. He was what they used to call a special contributor. He was called upon by the governments of the world when there was a, a problem too overwhelming to contain, such as Lord Emery. Uh, who? Lord Emery. He was the evil, what your father was to good. Behind the scenes, he was responsible for some terrible acts of terrorism, international drug running, not to mention that lousy remake of Godzilla with, with Matthew Broderick. What happened to him? It's, it's really very painful for me to tell you, Benjamin. But if you must know, then you can consult the wicker basket of ages past. My father looked just like me. Indeed, you could be the same man. I hope that was not too painful for you, young Schneedlegrass. No, it was difficult. But I now know who my parents were. And I guess I'm proud to be called their son. Now I know why everyone's afraid to talk to me. I'm the son of Percy Sniddlegrass, international man of mystery. He seems to have been quite a legend in the entertainment world. I have to admit, I read a book on him when I was 12 years old and fell in love with him for like a week. <laughs> Before I moved on to Johnny Depp. Is Johnny Depp a widow? No, but I mean, it's Johnny Depp. Come on. <laughs> Johnny Depp try and sink that shot. <clears throat> You're still three balls behind me, cowboy. I've got two balls on you now. Let's see you try and come back from that. You know, you might want to wait until you've got it in the bag. Before you start bragging, or going off half-top. 
I believe that makes you my bitch. <laughs> Bravo. You know, when I was a kid, I used to look at photos of Mary and Faithful from the mid-60s. Cut them out of magazines, print them off the internet. I had a shrine to her on my wall. I wanted her wardrobe, her hair, her makeup. I wanted to be her. Not just because she was a fantastic singer or because she did Mick Jagger when it actually meant something, but because she always looked like she knew what she was doing. And then I realized, it's just easier to know what you're doing because then you'll look like that anyway. You always know what you're doing. I always look <laughs> like I do. <laughs> <laughs> what are you actually talking about? I don't know. I'm tired I'm and drunk. drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Marianne Faithful. Good night, Johnny Leroy. <laughs> okay, well, I uh, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. I guess. Um Yeah. After you. Thanks. <laughs> So we start there and work our way up to proper concerts with people who are still alive today, us, tomorrow, Bruce Springsteen. What? <laughs> Nothing. You're very excited about all of this. Scarlet, Scarlet, Scarlet. This is exciting. Stay safe, Ben. to be a rock star, Ben? Yes. Have, Have you, you ever, ever been, been tempted? tempted? Yes. Have you ever loved a penguin? Wait. What? No. Touch me, touch me, touch me. What I'm is the secret of the cult of the penguins? Tell me, me about the cult of the penguins. Love me, love me, love me. Touch me, touch me, touch me. Touch me. It sounded pretty upset before. I could hear you holler from my room. It's okay. I was just having a bad dream. A very bad dream. Well, get back to bed then. You deserve a good rest after tonight's performance. I didn't know I had it in me. I did.
it's showtime. You came here to be creators, to be artists, to be filmmakers. You came here because you wanted to work under pressure and live like men. Now go! Dave Rims, eh, Dave? Take a fright! Good evening. We're in a Herzog's Rogue Film School. Pentangle speaking. Ah, Scarlet. What's happening, my sister? Just checking in to hear your voice. How's our boy? Ah. Tell me everything. Going my way? That depends. Does your way lead to the penguins? What is it with you and these bloody penguins? Don't get all snippy with me. I'm not the boy wearing a dress. I feel oddly comfortable with this. What is the secret of the cauldron of penguins? I don't know anything about the cauldron of penguins. <laughs> sounded like more than just a bad dream. If you saw Lord Emmerich when you entered the wicker basket, it only makes sense that you'd have a nightmare about him. But he was in both of my dreams, and each dream he kept talking about, this cauldron of penguins. What does it all mean? You should speak to Principal Herzog. He might be able to make sense of this. You're right. You know, I grew up in England, wearing daggy clothes and stupid glasses. I was picked on at school and I lived with my aunt who hated me. And then when I came here I thought I could fit in. But then I started having nightmares. I found out that my parents were superheroes and everybody's afraid to be my friend. I just... I just want to be normal. Sometimes normal is just another word for ordinary. This is most distressing, young Benjamin. But what does it mean, sir? I believe the undead spirit of Lord Emmerich has survived and is trying once again to gain corporeal purchase. But why me? Perhaps as revenge for your parents. And what's this cauldron of penguins he keeps talking about? I'm not sure, but it's essential he not be allowed to invade your dreams again. How can we stop him? I, I can't stay awake indefinitely. A sip of this solution every half hour should stop you from falling asleep. Get to my room. 
Benjamin, you ought to be thoroughly ashamed of yourself. Shut up. Hello, Benjamin. Don't you think it's time you got some sleep? Shut up, you stupid penguin. Come on, Ben. It's way past your bedtime. I don't have a bedtime. I make my own rules now. I've got on Swiss cotton underpants. Can't you feel your eyelids pulling down, Benny? Like they've got anvils chained to them? Stop it! <laughs> I'm so full of doubt! Do you live in the bloody library now? Pentangle. The librarian told me you've been holed up in here for two weeks now. I gotta find it. The secret. The cauldron of penguins. I can't sleep until I do not a wink, not a second, not a single bloody moment. Jesus, no wonder you're in a state. Pentangle, why is there a penguin on your shoulder? Ben, there's no penguin on my shoulder. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Come on, let's get you cleaned up. I got a bit worried when I didn't get my regular call from your friend Scarlet last week. Then I didn't hear from Principal Herzog either, so I called the school. And? Well, the reason I didn't hear from Principal Herzog or Scarlet is because they both vanished six days ago. Vanished? We think they've been taken by Lord Emmerich. This is the last place that they've been seen. Here. This is Scarlet. Wait. That's obviously a trap. I don't care. I have to go after her. I think I'm in love with her. I don't like this, Ben. But I won't stop you. Good luck, my friend. So we made it last, Lord Emmerich. Benjamin Sniddlegrass, you are every inch your father's son. Thank you, sir. You are much more pleasant in the flesh than in my nightmares. Now, untie my lady friend and tell me, where is Werner Herzog? He, sir. It's me, sir. No. You can't be. Believe it, Benjamin. I went to great lengths to create this persona after your parents tried to kill me. The self-destruct sequence annihilated your parents, but I survived. Thanks to my gorilla costume armor. I realized it would be better for all concerned if the world sought me dead, so I moved to Germany. I created an entire fictional character on myself of an eccentric Bavarian filmmaker. I even made a deranged remake of The Bad Lieutenant starring Nicolas Cage, and no one was the wiser. Knowing you were about to start your education, I had myself appointed headmaster of the Fairport Academy in the same year you were about to come there. It was me that placed a transmitter in your room, thus causing you the nightmares. It was me that spiked your drink mixture thereby befuddling your mind. Knowing how close you will be coming to uh, Scarlet, I arranged to have her abducted, knowing that the first thing you would do is come looking for her. Then, it was easy. I hid the teleportation device under a piece of her clothing, 
waiting for you to find it, activate it, and bring you here to this perfect replica of my old lair, where I could sacrifice you to the Lord Brockheimer, thus ensuring my eternal immortality! But couldn't you just have abducted me when I was in your office one of those times? And why did you even bother getting yourself sent to Fairport? You could have abducted me in London. That would have saved the whole false identity thing. Shut up! You fool! This is my evil plan, not yours. Besides, you fell for it, you idiot. Now get over there with your girlfriend so I can stab you both to death. Oh, that's the foulest tasting thing I've ever had in my mouth. And it will be the last. You are a fool, Benjamin Sneedlegrass. Just like your father. He believed in love and harmony. I believe the only universal truth is chaos, disharmony, and murder. Goodbye, Benjamin Sneedlegrass. What the hell was that? You didn't consider, Emmerich, that when you showed me the recording of your final confrontation with my father, you also showed me the control of the self-destruct mechanism. Not again. Scarlet, you know what this is. Welcome back, lover. Any dreams? Not one. You slept for 16 days. Well, I had a lot of catching up to do, Pentangle. Actually, it's Principal Pentangle now. They made me headmaster. Congratulations, my friend. I couldn't think of a better choice. Don't expect any special treatment. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. Well, I guess I'll leave you kids be. I've got uh, plenty to be getting on with. So, do you feel normal yet? Not in the slightest. And I couldn't be happier. Thanks for coming after me, by the way. It was the least I could do. You've been very good to me. How about you stay in bed a little while longer? I think I'm good with that. Ben, I've been meaning to ask you, what exactly is the Cauldron of Penguins? Uh, no idea. Never figured it out. Obviously wasn't important. Oh, okay. Just checking. Ever
devil let him down. 